But I am here today to talk to you about treasure and trash. Treasure and trash. And, and here is the core of your lesson today. Are you ready? Treasure is treasure. Trash is trash. Now, the people who brought me here today probably think, oh boy. I hope there's more to this than that. Because if we just spent all this money and we brought them in to tell us that treasure is treasure and trash is trash, oh my goodness. Okay, yes, there is a little bit more to it than that. Yes, we are going to get into more of those details. Treasure is treasure and trash is trash. Though it is core fundamental. Now, the reason this is actually a level of insight is because there are some people that don't understand that there's treasure and there's trash, and they're two different things. And honestly, don't understand that treasure is treasure, and trash is trash. Now, are you one of those? I don't know yet, but we will find out. And if as we go through, you discover that, whoa, I was taught that really differently than that. It's possible you might go, this guy's got a point. It's also possible you might go, this guy has no idea what he's talking about. Either one's okay, just as long as you try to understand my point, and just give it some thought later. Maybe you'll agree with me. Maybe you won't. Either way is okay with me. I'm here to provide some food for thought. Treasure is treasure and trash is trash. How we are going to explore this goes to that part of my bio that you heard in the introduction of me being a martial arts master. Now, being a martial arts master basically just means I've done this for a really, really, really long time, and I kept getting better at it. If you've been doing something for half a century, and you have not yet mastered the thing that you've been doing for half a century, you probably really haven't been doing a really good job at it. So we've got three levels based upon the martial arts background that I have. After almost half a century of studying, I will reach the highest level black belt, which is a 52-year rank when I turn 60. And I will have accomplished this 52-year rank in 54 years flat, just a little bit slow, a little bit behind schedule. Because just because I'm a master doesn't mean that I've gotten there fast. I've actually gotten there a little bit behind schedule, but that's okay because I'm still going to get there. In the martial arts, we have these three levels of training, just conceptually that we kind of like, like organize stuff. Shoden, Chuden, and Okuden. Shoden, if you, anyone knows martial arts, Japanese martial arts in particular, there's a rank called Shodan. The Don stands for the black belt ranks. Sho means first. So Shodan is a first degree black belt. Shoden is like first teachings. It's where you begin. So if I'm going to teach you like how to throw a punch, and one of the first things I'm going to teach you is, okay, fold the fingers, wrap the fingers, thumb over the first two fingers, and then the part that often gets overlooked, often overlooked to the point where it doesn't even get taught in many styles, is and squeeze the pinky. And if you get that pinky squeeze in, the thumb's locked in on the first two fingers, the pinky squeezes in on the end, that's how you make a fist for a good punch. And it helps tighten up the fist so that you're much less likely to break your hand. It's also what you need for a hammer fist. It's what you use for all the various punches. And that helps secure the hand and helps stabilize the wrist. That's the showdown thing. Now, so I see some of you are kind of fiddling around with that and trying to see how that works and flatten out the back of your fist so that these two knuckles hit. Depending on the martial arts style, you might have these three knuckles hit. Either way is an okay way to do it. And that's an example of shodan. Something very simple that you can be a beginner and learn. Then you have chuden. Chuden is getting much more advanced. Chuden we call the intermediate teachings. So shodan is the introductory level. It's the first teachings. It's the basics. And then you go a little bit deeper and you start getting into the Chuden. Chuden is getting the applications, it's getting a bit more advanced. So for instance with Shoden, we might teach you something that we call an outside crescent kick. It's just a kick that goes outside like that. 
Well, if you have trouble with the show, then if if you're going to like what, what, outside Crescent Kick, at, at, wait, how do I do that again? I'm not sure I get it. Then chew that is going to be really really hard for you. But if you can go, oh, okay, I get that. That's just you know goes out that way. All right, that makes sense to me. And then we're going to say, all right, now we're going to advance that to a spinning outside crescent. And now we're going to add a jump. We're going to do a jumping spinning outside crescent. All that's kind of at the chew den level. We're dealing with basic physical stuff. It'll probably still make sense to you whether you can physically do it yet or not. And that's kind of the intermediate teaching. That's the stuff. It's okay for people to see it. They just may not be able to do it. And... <laughs> Actually, I have to tell you something that's funny. So when I sit up here and I, I'll, I'll throw a kick, oh, wham! and there's this parabolic arc at the top, which is kind of a chewed in level detail on our kicks. Okay, I, I've got Oxfords on, uh, the, the lace-up dress shoes. I, I've done this with the slip-on <laughs> shoes, and, and the shoe goes flying. Now, fortunately, I've never done that in front of an audience where I had the shoe go flying into the audience. But I have done that in front of students where I said, Oh no, the kick goes like, and the shoe goes, whoa! Like, whoo, that, that could be bad. You don't want to be kicking, the, well, I guess it might be a good martial arts self-defense skill to be able to kick someone from 25 feet away, but, but not what we're trying to do here. So, so just rest assured, if, if any of you have any martial arts experience and have done anything where you have a shoe that slips on and it's gone flying off, just know that I'm wearing lace-up dress shoes, and so if I jump, spin, kick, or anything in the course of talking to you, the shoe will not go flying off. Uh, I, I, I can distract myself with that. Can you imagine the shoe? Fl okay. Sh shoe den. It's not supposed to be a shoe den level kick. But show den is the basic. The show den is like, so how does this go? When did, what is that basics? Then the shoe den is now, what can we do with that basis? Can we add a spin and kick? Can we jump and spin and kick? See, good, shoe stayed on. Nobody in the audience got hit with a shoe. Okuden. Okuden has kind of a double meaning. But it's the secret teachings. Shoden. What's the shoden? First teachings. Chuden, intermediate teachings. And the okuden is the secret teachings. Now, there's two reasons for okuden to be secret. One of the reasons for Okuden to be secret is tactics. Now, there might not be anything too terribly complicated about it. There might not be anything that's too difficult to do. But it's just sort of the secret tactical thing that if the other side knows what we're doing, they're going to be able to counter it. And so we're going to kind of keep that secret for those tactical reasons. And then we do this in all sorts of things, where we keep our play secret we're going to run as a sports team, we keep our marketing strategy secret that we're about to do as a company. We keep some of what we're working on in R&D secret as a company. And there might not be anything in there that other people can't duplicate or counter, and that's why we keep it secret. But what we're talking about mostly here for the Okuden, it's that complicated level of teaching. It's that level of insight where if you don't understand the shodan, it's not going to make any sense. If the shodan is a mystery to you, and you can't do that outside crescent kick, and I'm trying to teach you how to do spinning outside crescent kick, and the outside crescent kick already doesn't make sense to you, and I add a spin, and then I say we're going to kick. That's going to make even less sense to you. That's just going to be confusing. That's going to be trying to drag you into a level of sophistication that your brain and body just are not prepared for. Okuden does exactly the same thing. If Chuden doesn't make any sense to you, Okuden won't make any sense to you. But one of the reasons Okuden stays hidden is because if the Shoden and the Chuden foundations aren't already being laid, not only will the okuden not make sense, it might also be wildly misunderstood. And that you need to get to the foundation before you get to the more advanced things. So, shoden, chuden, okuden. First teachings, intermediate teachings, secret teachings. So what are we doing with that with treasure is treasure and trash is trash? Because treasure is treasure. Trash is trash. 
basic Shodan level. Let's dive into Shodan and take a look at Shodan. So treasure is treasure, trash is trash, Shodan level, three basic skills. Skill number one, treasure hunt. So we have this thing, treasure is treasure. Well, what is treasure? Where is the treasure? Are we missing some of our treasure? I'm not entirely sure why we do this as people. But we see it all the time. Where people get caught up in their trash and completely ignore their treasure. So the idea of the treasure hunt is fairly simple. It's what's good about this? What's good about this? Actually be on the lookout for treasure. Be on the lookout for good stuff. Catch someone doing something right. Affirm someone doing something well. When you see good things, pay attention to those good things. Has anyone here ever been to a Tony Robbins seminar? I, I went to Tony Robbins seminars, I don't know, 30, 30 years ago, maybe more. And a simple lesson he taught, even way back then, and admittedly it's been a little while since I've been there, so I don't know if he still does this exercise. But he let people look around the room, and look around the room for the color brown. Everything you see that's brown, and, and that's fine, you can look around right now. Everything that's brown. And now close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, try to imagine in your mind, if you've got the recollection, because you just looked around, up, eyes closed, and try to think of everything around you that's blue. Now open your eyes. Exactly. Because you weren't looking for blue. You were looking for brown. Now look around and see if there's any blue in the room that did not readily spring to mind when I said blue. Most people's brains just fried when I said, look for blue. And so when you look around the room now, and you're looking for blue, you will see the blue. Now if I tell you, okay, the brown is just crap. And you're going to have to do something about the brown. Do you need to be aware of everything you need to do something about? If you need to take action, if you have power, and you have responsibility. That means you can do something about it and it's part of your job to do something about that. Do you need to notice the brown? You must notice the problems because if it's your responsibility to solve those problems and you have or need to acquire the skill set or the authority, otherwise the power to solve those problems, you better notice those problems. But what if the blue is your treasure? And you're missing the blue sky. You're missing the blue ocean. You're missing the beautiful sunsets. Not only are you not stopping to smell the roses, you go, roses? There's roses? In San Diego, California, there's a park called Balboa Park. At the one end of the park, we have this beautiful big fountain, and it's between the Natural History Museum on one side and the Science Center on the other side. What, interestingly enough, even a lot of San Diegans don't know, is if you cross the walking bridge that's right near the fountain, on the other side of the street, not even 50 yards away, is a rose garden. And it's this beautiful, huge rose garden with tons of different kinds of roses, huge variety of roses, and something I'll just wander through, and I will literally stop and smell the roses. I'll stop at each type of rose. Some of them have a wonderful scent. Some of them have very little scent. And I just enjoy my time in the rose garden. And some people don't even know that it's there. Well, I'll mention the rose garden. Some people, oh yeah, the one near Balboa Park. And other people, what, what, there's a rose garden? What? We have a rose garden? Where's the rose garden? And so this idea of treasure hunting is, do you have a rose garden? Do you even know there are roses? And if you know you have a rose garden and you know there are roses, do you stop and smell the roses? 
Or do you stop with your special person and slow dance among the roses? And all sorts of opportunities open themselves up if you will look for them. You still need to pay attention to the crap. You still need to know what the problems are because you have to solve the problems. You still need to know what the trouble is because you got to shoot the trouble. You got to be the problem solver. You got to be the troubleshooter. You still have to notice all of that stuff. I'm not saying don't pay attention. What I am saying is also hunt for your treasure. Look for the good stuff. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. That's the treasure. We're going to go pursue the treasure. We have to deal with all the other stuff anyway. We don't want to miss out on the treasure. Then focus on your treasure. So we hunt for it. And then we focus on it. We give it our intentional attention. So life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness. Intentionally aiming ourselves in this direction of happy. Now, I'm not talking about you specifically, sir. No, no, you, you are not my happiness. I'm sure you're a wonderful man. But... The pursuit of happiness is to focus on your treasure. Now, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm just like anybody else. Stuff goes wrong in my life, and that frustrates me. I get upset and angry about stuff just like anybody else does. One of the things that enrages me the most, and I don't know if any of you can relate to this, it's when technology won't cooperate. Because, you know, I hit print on my computer, and what is the printer supposed to do? It's supposed to print, right? And I hit print on my computer, and the thing won't print. So, okay, so I, I do the same thing. I turn it off, I turn it back on again, or in my case, I'll unplug it, I'll, I'll let it kind of relax for a little while, I'll plug it back in, and 99 times out of 100, it'll still work. So if I've got ink in my printer, or I've got toner in my printer, depending which one of my printers I'm using, if I've, I've powered it down and I powered it back up so I make sure it's connecting to my computer properly. Sometimes I powered my computer down and powered my computer back up so I get a clean connection because sometimes if, if the computers and printers have been busy talking to a whole bunch of other computers and printers, they don't seem to want to chit-chat anymore. And then it still doesn't work. Oh, that frustrates me to no end. But what if I let that be my entire life? I'm going to live a life of fury. I'm going to live a life of frustration. I'm going to live a life of pain. There is a bunch of crap in the world. If I choose to focus on nothing but trash, I can have a pretty darn trashy life. So I choose to focus on my treasure. So I've got a million dollar library. Actually, it's a multi-million dollar library. Yeah, and I'm sure some of you, uh, for a moment, might be thinking, he has a million dollar library at his house? No, I've got a million dollar library down the street around the corner. The public library. Now, over the arc of time, I've, I've, I've got comfortably a five-figure library in my home, but I don't own everything I think of owning. There's a whole bunch of stuff. I go to the library and I check it out. And if my local branch does not have it, I can ask them if there's one anywhere in the system. And if there is anywhere in the entire county, they can get it for me. That's pretty incredible. So what if I focus on things like that, that not only do I have a very substantial library in my home, if somebody suggests a book to me, or someone suggests a movie to me, or someone suggests an audio to me, or someone suggests that I look into something and think, well, I don't know if I'm prepared to just go spend money on the thing without knowing more about what it's about, but I might like to take a look at it. So there was like a Napoleon Hill book that came out. I thought, well, that sounds like that might be interesting. I don't know if I just want to go out and buy it. But it turned out my local library both could get me a hard copy and an audio copy. So I listened to it in my car, and I sped read it. Because I was listening to it in my car, I didn't need to slow down and really digest it. I kind of let the combination of it 
accumulate for me. I said, well, that's kind of an interesting book. It was one of the books that I used for my book reports in the 52 books a, a year I was reading. But it wasn't interesting enough for me to own one of my own. Then there's other things where I go check it out, and I thought, wow, I really like this. And so then I buy one so it goes in my library. A lot of times that'll happen with DVDs. Where there's one particular movie, I check that as like, this is a good movie. I like this one. I want to own this one. And so then I order a copy for myself, and it's in, it's in my DVD library. Same thing with books. Where there was one book in an audio set. I got it. I thought, wow, I really like this. So I went to my local bookstore, and I ordered the book. And I got the audio. So now I have the audio and I own the book. And when I, I do things like that, very often I'll go to my local bookstore because I also like hanging out at the local bookstore. So even though I could save a lot of money by ordering it online, if it's in the bookstore, I'll go buy it at the bookstore because I want that bookstore to stay in business. And the business I want to be there, I make sure that I am their paying customers so that they can make some money so that they can still be there so I can go hang out there because a lot of times I'm there I'm just looking around, I'm hanging out, I'm not spending money. So when I do have money I'm going to spend on things that they do have in inventory, I'll go there and I'll spend my money with them to purchase the things from the place I want to have stay there so I can go hang out there all those times I'm not spending money. And, and that's just kind of a, it's, it's a philosophy. Now you might decide that, well that sounds like a good idea, I think I'm going to do that. Or you might think like, oh no, you got, got to save the money. Why, why would you go spend $50 on a book you can get there when you can get the same book for $42 and that you can save that 8 bucks? Well, I'm spending $8 to support the business. I'm spending the extra $8 to help keep my hangout place there but when I want to go hang out at the bookstore. So that's like my $8 admission and considering how often I go there compared to how often I'm buying stuff, I mean, I'm paying like 50 cents a visit. I mean, if they had a little box in the front and say, you know, a, a dollar per visit, I'd, I'd go in there all the time anyway and just drop a dollar in the thing. So being their customer helps support that business. So still on the, the show deck, focus on your treasure. What is your treasure? I've got this incredible library down the street around the corner. I don't have to spend money to just check out a book. I don't have to spend money to take a look at a certain movie. I don't have to go find it somewhere. They'll find it for me. That's pretty incredible. I have a computer in my pocket with more computing power than it took us to land on the moon. That's pretty incredible. Last night, I'm having a online chat where I'm typing to them, they're typing to me in real time from more than halfway across the country. Earlier this week I'm on the phone with my mother who lives halfway across the country in another state catching up with my mom. Now when I was a kid we could still do that but you'd have to plan out your calls. Now for those of you who are younger, talk to those of us who are older, we'll, we'll tell you. The long distance phone call days. Who remembers the long distance phone call days? I remember the, the, this little, little scrap paper we'd write out, okay, this is what you do. We're, we're, we're going to cover these bullet points, and these are the things we're going to talk to Grandma about because it's going to be costing us money per minute. And if we cross that 60-second mark on any given minute, we have to pay for a whole other minute. And, and back then, as I recall, because I was a kid, you would pay for the connection... And then you would pay again for that first minute. So that first minute cost double. And every time you went tick, tick, tick over that 60 second mark, you're paying for another minute. And so someone's watching the clock, literally watching the clock, to see how many seconds do we have before we click over the next minute. And then if we click over the next minute, we're going to talk for 45 more seconds. And then wrap it up, say goodbye, and try to end it before the click, click, and done. I don't have to do that anymore. I just put in my earbuds, call my mom on this, on this pocket computer that I walk around with, and I just chit-chat with my mother, not connected to a wall, not connected to even something that's plugged into a wall, wandering around, taking care of other stuff, chit-chatting with my mother while I go run errands. That's pretty incredible. 
So when we focus on our trait, we focus on stuff like that. We focus on the fact that I can head down to the airport, get in this giant steel tube, and in a matter of hours be almost anywhere else in the world I might possibly want to be. I could be in San Diego and six hours later I could be in Disney World. I've got a car. I could walk out, get in my car, and in two or three hours be inside Disneyland. That's pretty incredible. And then I can listen to audios in my car, so I get to learn stuff while I'm driving around. That's pretty incredible. Focusing on our treasure. Skill set number three. Take out the trash. So on the showdown level, treasure hunt. What is the treasure? Where is it? And then skill set two, focus on that treasure. Pay attention to the good stuff in life. And number three, take out the trash. So once a problem's solved, how much do I need to fret about the problem? It's solved, done. Once the trouble shot, we finish troubleshooting the trouble, how much do I need to fret about the trouble? So once it's done, it's done. Take out the trash. Don't keep worrying about the bad stuff, especially if you have no power anyway, you have no responsibility about it anyway, and all it's doing is upsetting you. <clears throat> oh, pardon me. And that's taking out the trash. Don't be going out of your way to hang on to your trash. Now we're talking specifically here about the easy stuff to just dispense with. Some people stunningly enough still go out of the way to see people but no longer serve them. They go out of the way to find problems, even create problems, and make them even more dramatic when they're very upsetting. And they go, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. It's not my responsibility. It's just a fact of life. I've got important things that are my responsibility. I've got important things that are within my power to do something about. I don't want to be missing all of my treasure. Now, one friend of mine used to be a big talk radio listener and realized somewhere down the line that listening to so much talk radio that all that was really being accomplished is she was bad all the time. Now, politically, she was very well informed. She knew what was going on for her political party. She knew what was going on in the world. She, she had the information, but she had the information and the commentary and the support for a particular point of view that she found ultimately it wasn't her responsibility. She had no authority. She wasn't like writing her congressman or emailing her senator or doing any of the stuff where she's being engaged with the issue, she's just being upset with the issues. And she said, you know what? I have no power, and I'm not exercising what little power I have. I don't have the responsibility past the voting time that I'm, I'm exercising. And all I'm really accomplishing is I'm upset all the time. So I'm going to get rid of that. So she stopped listening to talk radio. And she said, you know what? This thing that you do where you're listening to audios all the time, when I get in the car with you, there's some teacher teaching a thing. That's helpful. So I'm going to take out the trash, which in her case was the thing that all it's doing is feeding her upsetness. And then she was going to treasure hunt, go find some of the programs in my library, and then she was going to focus on the treasure. What can I do something about? What should I do something about? What will actually improve my life? And then that's where she put her focus. So show then love. Now anybody can learn this part. Treasure is treasure. Trash is trash. Go hunt for the treasure. Treasure is treasure. Trash is trash. When you know where your treasure is, put your primary focus there. And then, take out the trash. If it's a problem, solve the problem. If it's trouble, troubleshoot the trouble. 
But don't go focusing on trash. Don't go adding trash. Don't go building trash. Trash is for taking out. Trash is for not accumulating. So when the trash comes through, the trash should go all the way through and be gone. You can think of a biology metaphor, if you like. You don't want to keep the crap. Now, chew-den. We're going to go a little faster on chew-den and okuden. The shoden, we can do shoden in this kind of setting. We can do shoden in a keynote address. We're going to introduce chuden and barely introduce okuden because, as you can imagine, digging deeper into that requires a little bit more. Just like starting off with an outside crescent kick. Okay, we can spend some time and break that out and how that goes inside and outside and how the shoulder goes and how the hip goes and how, how you avoid hurting your knees and how that parabolic arc goes. But we're probably going to leave it there for a while, right? We're not going to worry so much about the spinning outside crescent and then the jumping spinning outside crescent. We're going to kind of leave those for later. But I'll show them to you. I might even explain them to you. But we're not really going to teach it right away. And that's kind of what we're doing here. So true then, the intermediate level of treasure is treasure, trash is trash, is to know the difference between treasure and trash. Now this is usually the first level I start to run in a little bit of controversy. This is the main part of this point I want to make. So suppose something really bad happened to me. I'll, I'll use it as a martial arts metaphor. So suppose when I was young, I got jumped by this guy, and I just got beaten to a bloody pulp. I got pounded into the ground, and then I stood back up, and, and you know, I, I could do this all day, like, like total Captain America attitude. And then he pulls a knife, and I've got my knife defense techniques, and he thrusts it, I jump back, I do the low cross wrist, and then he just slices my forearms, and, and I come out of the whole mess, waking up ultimately in the hospital with stitches on half a dozen cuts. Find out it's been three days. But then I figure some stuff out. That because I got cut, I realize, you know, the, the, the lunging thrust where I jump back and do that low cross wrist defense. Well, well, my opponent stops there and they hold it like a fencing lunge and they wait for me to do my... You know, it really doesn't work that way. And, uh, you know, I got beaten by a puppet. You know, the stepping back and the, the exact way that I was taught to do things back then, maybe that doesn't quite work. And I figure out a lot of really great stuff. And that had I not gotten beaten up, I might never even have thought about it. If I hadn't gotten cut, I might never even have thought about it. And that uh, as I became a martial arts instructor, teaching self-defense, this experience that I had informed me of the realities of self-defense. And because of that experience, I was able to learn from other masters and figure out and be able to evaluate a whole series of self-defense techniques so that when I finally went on to teach my students that we have a 30 for 30 perfect track record. Now that part's true. Now that's as much luck as it is anything else. But 30 times my students have been attacked. And 30 times my students have successfully defended themselves at a wide variety of levels of force. All the way from the nobody has to get hurt, all the way up to the police take him away and need to take him straight to the hospital. Isn't it lucky that I had this horrific negative experience? Doesn't that make that experience treasure? because of all of this great stuff I learned. See, some nodding heads, because that's a typical teaching. My response to that is, no! That's still trash! Because here's the thing. 
What if I say that bad experience is treasure? I care about you guys. I also want you to have treasure. Yet a little bit uneasy now, huh? If that experience was the treasure, then that means that if I love you, imagine I'm your dad. Oh, I, I love you, son. What I really hope happens to you is. Or my students going, you know, it says, as a dedicated martial arts master, this was an incredible treasure to me. I don't want you to miss out. So the treasure I want you to have is for someone to hospitalize you. No! The experience was trash. Now, I'll tell you, I never actually went through that. I've known people who have been through experiences like that. And you know what? No matter what they learned from it, I never wanted to have one of those experiences. I've got enough crappy experiences in my own life that I consider trash that I don't need any more. But if the experience is treasure, of course I want to have it because it's treasure. You know what the treasure is? The treasure is the lessons learned from the experience. So if I can talk to the masters who they had the trash experience and they crafted and learned the treasure and I can get the treasure from them without the trashy experience I'll take the treasure I'll take all <coughs> oh my goodness pardon me I'll take all the treasure I can get now I got to learn that there was a master who was a friend of mine up until the time he died. He had a trashy experience. He had learned a technique to defend against a full Nelson. And he was so good at this technique that the, what he would do at demonstrations is he would have someone come, hey, grab hold of me, hold on, do not let go. And he would do his move. And so it's full Nelson. And he would lock in their arms, he'd step back, drop down, pop the hip, and he'd throw the person over his shoulder. And every single time as the person goes flying over the shoulder, hits the ground, and he's escaped the full Nelson in dramatic fashion. So one day when he was a six-degree black belt, decades ago, he pulls up the second degree black belt, says, hold on, don't let go, just hold on as best you can. Do not let go. Do you understand? Says, yes, sir. Exactly the same thing he said every other time. And then he locked in the arms. He dropped down, slipped back. He popped the hip and dropped the shoulder down. Guy goes flying over. And then suddenly he wakes up in the hospital. So here's what happened. So, full Nelson, locked in, fingers interlaced, tight. Guy goes flying over. The hands don't come apart. Cranks the neck down. There's this nasty popping sound. And had dislocated his neck. Hadn't killed him, obviously. But did the classic, broke his neck. The way the doctors had to take care of that is they had to literally fuse his neck. He could only turn his head a little bit that way, a little bit this way. You want to see what was going on too much of that? He had to turn just a little bit he could and turn his whole body. Because he could no longer turn his head like the, rest, like the rest of us can turn our heads. That was a trash experience. Now, do I want to learn how to handle that kind of attack? Yeah. Do I want to get my neck broken to find out whether or not the technique I already know consistently works safely? No, no, absolutely not. So we need to know the difference between treasure and trash. It's never the trash, oh, I let it go, I forgive it, nothing bad happened. Because I learned good stuff from it. It's never... Aren't I lucky that this bad thing happened? No, you're never lucky a bad thing happened. The treasure in there is, isn't it a great thing that I have the wisdom to look into the experience 
and learn some important stuff and figure out some important stuff. Isn't it great that I had the resilience to come through this kind of just trashy experience? <coughs> that I have the ability, the resilience to come through this trashy experience and learn something out of it. Gain resilience out of it. Be able to still walk in my compassion and insight and understanding even though the experience was trash. And wouldn't it be magnificent if I could share the treasure so no one else has to go through the trash. Treasure is treasure, trash is trash. Skill one, two, then level, know the difference between treasure and trash. Skill two, treasure your treasure. So not just focus on your treasure, enhance your treasure, revisit your treasure, remember your treasure, talk about your treasure, treat the treasure like it's what's valuable. So many of us talk about our trash. Might we need to talk about our trash? Of course we need to talk about our trash. But some of us talk about our trash like it's the most valuable thing we have going on. So I'm not saying don't talk about your trash. What I am saying is to treasure your treasure. That over the arc of time chatting with you, I should be hearing what's most important to you. And hopefully what's most important to you in your life is your treasure. Hopefully what's most important to in your life is your husband or your wife, is your kids, is your vacations, is your adventures, is your freedom, is your opportunities, is your accomplishments. These are the things I want to hear. These are the things I want you to, to, to live in. To live in your treasures. You still have to deal with your trash. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying ignore the trash. But treasure your treasure. And then trash your trash. It begins with recognize what the trash is. And then when you trash your trash, that means, okay, what do I need to do to get rid of this trash? Part of it is, is it done and over with? Okay, if it's done and over with, well, then it's done and over with. If it's done and over with, but it's still bugging me, is there something that I can do with it to get it to stop bugging me if it's done and over with? Is there something maybe I need to learn, a little bit of okra then we'll touch on that, but not to fret about stuff, not to live in worry. But there's a thing that like nine out of ten things that we worry about never come to pass. The numbers may vary somewhat, but how much time do I want to spend worrying about something that's not even going to happen anyway? So here's a short version of a story. I was on my way to Las Vegas, taking two members of my team with me in the car, uh, along with one of their seeing eye dogs. And on the way to Las Vegas, my car dies. Plan A was just drive to Las Vegas. Plan A didn't work. Well, now I have a problem. So now how do I solve the problem? How long do I want to fret about this problem? Or do I just want to solve the problem? Well, I ended up with Plan A, which just drive there to Plan B, Plan C, Plan D, Plan E. And I was on Plan E by the time I physically made it to Las Vegas. And my car is in the shop somewhere. And then plan F, plan G, plan H, plan I. I literally came home on plan M, driving a new car I picked up in Las Vegas. And then starting teaching a new program whose intention it was was to give me additional income to offset the cost of the car. Plan M. But while I was in Las Vegas, how much of my mental energy and emotional energy do I want to have dominated by this trash? I'm there for a martial arts convention. I'm there to meet up with and learn from a variety of other masters, many of which are much more experienced and have insights that, that I don't have. I want to learn that. I have lunches and dinners to have. I have a team to take care of. I need to be present. I need to trash the trash. Solve the problems as they come. 
not be fretting about a thousand things that haven't happened yet. And then here's the big one. Did I know beforehand I was going to solve the problem somehow? Yeah. So if I know come the end of the month, whatever arc of time it might possibly take me, if I know I'm going to solve the problem anyway, do I want to have the mental and emotional attitude from looking back on the solved problem? Or do I want to have the mental and emotional attitude of, it's the end of the world, the sky is falling, I can't believe this happened to me. And not be mentally present for meeting my friends. Not be emotionally present to connecting with my fellow masters, of not learning anything, not experiencing it because I'm so emotionally and mentally distracted, I'm really not enjoying all the cool things I've got going on. Or do I want to keep the trash in perspective and then solve the problems as they come? You can guess which one I chose to do. Okude. Okuden level of treasure is treasure, trash is trash. Going a bit quicker on this one. Treasure stays treasure, so keep it. Sometimes we forget that treasure is treasure. Treasure is not trash. Ex relationships. So I've been married, I've been divorced. Does that mean that I have all these bad memories of my ex wives? Not at all. I married some spectacular women. In fact, I have a long history of drawing spectacular women into my life. The first one was in the mid-60s, my mom. Another one in my mid-60s, grandma. Spectacular women in my life, my whole life, including ultimately the women that I married. That to this day, I consider spectacular women. The treasure is still treasure. The trips we took are still treasure. The great experiences we got to have are still great experiences. If when a relationship ends, all the things that were good in that relationship are now bad, painful, hurtful memories, you know what that means if I'm somewhere with you? Say the whole group of us decide that we're going to go do this, this nice convention in Disney World, and we have this fantastic time. What it means is, I don't know if this is treasure yet. It might be treasure right now, but you know, if, if ultimately we decide we're not going to work together anymore, and then we don't like each other anymore, and that means that whole experience is trash now. So when I'm in the middle of it, I can't savor it yet, because I don't know if this treasure is this trash. Might feel like treasure, could be trash later, don't really know. Okuden. Can you see why this is Okuden? For some of us, we might go, oh yeah. For a lot of us, we're going, I don't know about that one. That's why it's Okuden. That's why it's the secret teaching, the hidden teaching, the advanced teaching. And the trash is trash. So learn the lesson and take out the trash. Learn the lesson. Now, this is particularly important for the really hard trash. Because when I'm talking about just take out the trash and then you're pretty casual about take out the trash, we're talking about pretty much the conventional day-to-day -day problems, the conventional day-to-day -day troubles, the things that might bug us and annoy us and be hurtful or scare us a bit or stress us out a bit. But, you know, they're pretty ordinary day-to-day -day stuff. But some magnitude of trash is traumatizing. Some magnitude of trash impacts us in our core identity. Some magnitude of trash can impact our ability to trust. Some magnitude of trash can impact our ability to love and to connect with people. And to take out that trash is a skill set. There are actual techniques to do that. And these techniques are enormously powerful, but they're learned skills. I've got 
four books and two programs that go over this. I mean, it's, it's not just the casual, oh yeah, just let it go type thing. Trash is trash. And a lot of that trash we will not be able to successfully let it go unless and until we learn the lesson, which is part of the technique. Because if you don't learn the lesson, your heart's going to step and go, whoa, we need this lesson to stay safe. And it won't let it go because it doesn't feel safe. But you get all of the wisdom and insight out of it. So your heart can go, all right, all right, I'm comfortable with that. Then it can let it go. And then you can take out that trash if you know how. It's part of why that's oku then. There's a whole bunch of how do you do that tied up in there. And Okuden skill three, reinvent yourself based on treasure, not on trash. Now what I mean by that is there's treasure and there's trash. Treasure is treasure, trash is trash. As we learn and grow and change, and all of us do. I mean, I'm not the same person I was when I was five. When I was 15, I wasn't the same person I was when I was five. When I was 25, I wasn't the same person I was when I was 15. The fundamental core elements of my aptitudes and my attributes and my personality might have been very consistent throughout my entire life. But I know stuff I didn't know. I have skills I didn't have. I have experiences I didn't have back then. I have the perspective of a longer life to reflect upon that I didn't have when I was 20. So I've changed. I've grown. I've gained insight. I've gained skill. I've gained wisdom. Sometimes, and I've had this person sitting in my office for counseling, Again and again, not, not an individual type of person. And much of their life is designed around the trash that has happened to them. Much of their life is designed around a cultivated fear. That that's how they make most of their decisions. They have reinvented themselves. They have learned and grown out of their trash to make choices and decisions in their life based on fear. There are other people who have had these bad experiences and, and they have learned to make their choices and decisions out of anger, out of hurt, out of guilt, out of, curiously enough, hopelessness. And they, they let these trash experiences in the background become the core of who they are. All of us, me included, have for some arc of time allowed the trash in our lives to dominate and to govern our choices and decision making. I'm no different in that respect. What I try to be careful of is having my identity grounded in that trash. So you reinvent yourself. You learn, you go based on your treasure. On your treasure hunt on treasuring your treasure, on focusing on your treasure, on your strengths, on your abilities, on what you can do, on the wonderful experiences that you've had. I've got this whole list, and, and if you go into my social media, you'll find that I've got these multiple folders. One is Dreams Done. That one's focused on travel. These are all the really cool places I've gotten to go. Another one is Dream Show Seen. This is all the great entertainment I've gotten to enjoy. The Cirque du Soleil shows, the concerts, 
and so much more. There's another one, Dream Dining Done. These are all the, the really amazing and or meaningful places that I've gotten to eat. Then there's this category called Dream Destinations. And these are the places that are on the list to go. Now some of them going places that aren't on the list just because the opportunity arises and they're not going to turn down treasure. But there's all these dreams of places. Oh, I'd love to go to these places. I'd love to do these things. I'd love to go eat at that restaurant. I'd love to go see this show. And then there's a category called drop dreams. And I keep that as a folder, even though I've dropped the dream, as a reminder. Now, some of the dreams have been dropped because the show got canceled. You know, that's a reminder. But if you wait too long you might lose your opportunity. There was a show I wanted to go see called Showstoppers. Well, the show stopped. Can't go see it now. <sighs> and I had a shot. Could have gone. Picked a different show. Could have gone to both of them. There's a, an acquaintance of mine has a show. And I've seen him at multiple casino resorts. Well, for a while, he was at Planet Hollywood. I had a chance to go see him, but we had a lot of stuff going on that year, and I was fielding it in the evening, and I ended up not seeing him. And then a year later, he's at a different casino resort. I missed the chance to go see my guy. But my friend was performing at this particular resort, and now I'm going to only seen him three of the four resorts that he's performed at. Not at all four of them. Kind of cool to be able to see him in all these different places. I like seeing my friends accomplish some stuff. But now I will forever have missed because he doesn't perform there anymore. And so the stuff in the drop dreams folder reminds me, don't delay too long on your dreams. There's another category in the drop dreams folder of places that get dropped from the list because they were connected to a person. That I wasn't going to go there because I wanted to go there. And that if I go there, I was going to take whoever was most important special to me in my life, the wife, the kids. It was we were going to go there. And it was an us thing. And then when there's no longer an us, well, then we drop the us thing. And that's a reminder to me that any new us deserves its own dreams. Not my dreams that she can come along with, but us dreams that we build for uniquely us. Shoden, chuden, okuden. Treasure is treasure. Trash is trash. Beginning introductory level, intermediate level, advanced level. I am Scott Conway, PhD, JD, the guy with the crazy resume, the guy with too many letters after his name. You can find me, email me directly at scott at scottwith1t.com. You have that information written down for you. Of course, get hold of me through the website, scottwith1t.com. You can find my books on Amazon. Just put my name in there or go to my author page or you can link to it through scottwith1t.com. Lots of ways to get there. So what is our ultimate lesson here? So ready with me? Treasure is treasure. Trash is yes. Ready? And treasure is treasure. Trash is trash.